Welcome to episode 27 of Beyond the Furthest Stars. And we flash back to the crew of the Tiz Camp. So I know we're just like in the parking lot, but is there like in a, uh, like a, you know how ERs have like the, this is where the ambulance guys can go because it's an emergency. They got to get a person in there fast. Is there a that? I didn't design one, but there probably would be. Yeah. Okay. Because I imagine this facility is probably going to have, like most facilities on the Capitol is probably going to have a weapons check. I I think that's something that we could all into it. Is there any way that we can make it look like this is an emergency and we need to get in there fast without them taking our weapons? (laughs) Does that make sense? Am I making sense? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You make sense. Yeah. Basically, we need help now. Yeah, Yeah, totally. Because Road does need help now. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, um, I think it would be pretty great to have Marty burst off the, the thing, leading the stretcher. Yeah, yes, the, so we can the show the yeah, yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> we will say you took one of the medical beds, the hover beds from the Cassiopeia, and put it on the Tiz Cam. Sweet. So y'all have this hover bed that y'all can put Ro on and, and, and get her into the, into the medical bay. So it's on the other side of the building from where you're at. Oh, okay. Well, I guess, well, back into the ship. (laughs) We're going to have to park on the other side. (laughs) Also, parking lot's full. ER is busy. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) Just land on some other... Yeah, we like wasting resources. (laughs) Um, So, Ollie's also going to want to uh, disassemble his combat rifle and stash the parts inside himself. Oh, and then he has like little hands inside himself that are putting it together. (laughs) Y'all think this is going to go so bad. I don't understand. No, I just like having weapons on hand. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot <laughs> fight. <laughs> I not, not with shoot. your body, but with your mind. Yeah, this is true. And I fight with my body. <laughs> to varying <laughs> degrees of success. <laughs> so, okay. Ollie, you do that. I mean, you know your body. You know where you can hide things. So I'm not going to make you roll a skill check for that. Yeah, so you disassemble your, your weapon and you stash the parts inside of your inside your chassis. So y'all are going to... Is this the plan everyone wants to go with? Uh, bluffing your way into the medical bay past the security checkpoint? Yeah, feel free to come up with a less risky idea. <laughs> <laughs> Does Major Tom have anything to say with this before we go in there? Because I feel like... Yeah, it's on his authority that we're requ- requisitioning the lab. Well, we're we're here. Uh, how, how do you, how, are, how are we going to go in? You just want me to go in and present the the papers, and we can just take uh, this uh, row person uh, back there and and get them fixed up, right? We're going in emergency style. Oh, are are you sure? I mean, we have the requisite. We already got permission to be here. It's not like we got to yes, but I the extra I'm mile. Sure, but I'd like to keep my weapons. Yeah, are they going to take our weapons if we try to? Just go in to the way Oh, yeah, it's a secure it. facility. There's, like, psionics who are really sick there, and if they got a hold of weapons, they could really do some damage. Like, not even, like, purposefully, but just, like, due to the nature of some of their illnesses. Oh, yeah, huh? Yeah. Huh, well. I mean, you could you could be put in the whole whole city of Ambrosia. It's just a few, a few miles away. You could put that whole city in danger. Oh, well, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> What's done is done. The gun is stashed. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, Polaris will just walk over to Ollie and hand him his laser blades. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Machamp's just like, yeah, I, I don't really think y'all should be bringing those in. I mean, I won't say anything, but I mean, it's not exactly safe. Noted. As he hands the second laser blade to Ollie. <laughs> Ollie, do you like disassemble these and also hide them in your? Um, no, orifices? they're probably small enough that they can just fit in. Yeah. If you just turn them off, sure. which players didn't turn them off when he handed them to you. He always turned them on. <laughs> <laughs> They're just always <laughs> What? <laughs> when I said so Polaris just... is a, a danger to public safety, I bet he literally always has them on to some degree. It's all like the door. The door oh, you just like here, next to you. Light switches <laughs> around the ship have like, yeah. Do they, do they all have like scorch marks around all the uh, light switches on the ship and shit? <laughs> there's just little there's little little holes that have been made into makeshift holsters to hold <laughs> yeah. them I mean he has a belt he has a utility belt <laughs> what 
Oh gosh. Okay. Um. <laughs> so uh, Machamp isn't going to say anything. Good. But y'all sneaking in weapons, but um, is definitely uncomfortable by the idea. Well, cool. Um, and Marty, he helps you get Row situated on this hover bed, and it's just like so: front door or emergency door. This is a medical emergency. Zom looks to Polaris. Your call. Why is it my call? I don't know. It was your idea. Well, I said emergency style. I assumed that we were going to go in emergency style, but okay. Cool. So, like, Marty starts, like, that, like, fun little... You know, like, when before people start races, they start doing that little hoppy thing? Yeah. <laughs> what Marty's doing next to the bed. She's ready to push Ro. <laughs> all of her five... All of her little frame. Um... <laughs> There's like three of us pushing the gurney. All right. Like, go, go, go. <laughs> Ready? Everyone cool. lurk, look urgent. <laughs> Marty like starts full sprint towards the door and just goes, move, move, move. We have an emergency. We have an emergency. Please, please help, help, help. We've been, we had permission before. Now this has gotten more critical. As she's like starting to like also say different medical terms with it. Like yeah. medical terms that make sense. But like <laughs> the player doesn't know this. <laughs> <laughs> Marty does. <laughs> yeah, Polaris is on the side pushing the gurney behind Marty, like making it look like an actual emergency. Because usually there's like two or three people pushing the gurney, right? In a med- medical emergency. Yeah. 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 Suzanne is running alongside with like cables attached to the bed and a holographic display on his other arm. Of, Hell like, yeah. Like, uh, like life, life sign readings. Let's go. You just Googled it and it's like a GIF on loop. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, Ollie's going to be on the on a side pushing as well. And he's just going to be uh, reciting random but urgent sounding medical uh, numbers. You know, like, uh, you know, the usual oh, bl- like, like blood yeah, pressure, blood, blood pressure dropping. And stuff. It, you know, X over Y. <laughs> X over Y. <laughs> and Polaris will just be like, just like get out of the way just like making like moving people aside and like trying to get like you know make their way (laughs) sure um you come into this medical bay and they are not quite ready to receive you in this way (laughs) they should always be ready (laughs) right well you know that's their problem they weren't yeah (laughs) and they knew we were coming (laughs) sort of whether Oswald told everyone you were coming, different story. Oh, we're about to uh, embarrass the fuck out of this man. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> In this medical bay, there are three chambers to the left that are filled with some strange green liquid. And suspended in the liquid are three individuals who look to be sleeping. There's a lab worker nearby checking vital signs on these uh, little chambers here. Also in this room is a set of operating beds next to each other. Uh, there is a cat scan machine which is represented by this little radioactive sign even though cat scans are magnetic i believe and not radioactive but whatever there's computers there's a vent there's some other stuff in the back that you can't quite see as you come rushing in here and the lab worker's like i i we weren't expecting any we didn't get any calls about an emergency uh uh what do you what do you need and then i turn to this person and i go we have permission as well as We had informed your lead here. What is his name? Dr. Um, Oswald is supposed to alert you of our presence here. Oh, yeah. Dr. Oswald, he they they didn't say anything. I'll go. I'll go double check. And they (laughs) run out of this room here. And as they do, you hear an alarm going off somewhere else in the building. (laughs) And you do hear Oswald like shouting expletives. Bruce, what do you do? You just heard. (laughs) this person reference Marty could be a different Marty you don't know but you're here you've caused a distraction what is your next step my next step is going to be to try and like get out of the room and go somewhere private like I don't know if there's a washroom or I don't know if there's like a room that's just like unoccupied you know of course I didn't think to make a bathroom but there's definitely a a restroom of some kind Uh, we'll say right here is a restroom with a vent perfect yeah. <laughs> a Bruce sized vent. <laughs> is 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 the vent Bruce sized? They are. They are they are Bruce sized okay. because because like Batman Arkham they are Asylum robot one. sized so that the maintenance bots can get in and out easily. Mm. Okay. All right. So the first step of Bruce's plan is to remove the cardboard like what he made uh costume sort of thing 
And underneath it, yes, it was blue, but it's also a maintenance jacket. So now he looks like a maintenance guy. And he removes removes the glasses because obviously the glasses were part of the Comic-Con disguise. And instead puts on like this white baseball hat because he can. (laughs) And proceeds to like, because it's cardboard, he just folds it up and puts it in the recycling bin because he's a good boy and he recycles. And then he'll kind of look up at the vent and having noticed the other vents, is there a way for him to like, I don't know, step on the toilet and like get up in there? Because that's what he wants to do. The vents are actually in the ground. Oh, okay. Even better. Oh, it's like a drop robots. So yeah, he's just gonna open it up and uh, jump on in. <laughs> sure. Um, and you do hear some some panic going on outside as people are evacuating Oswald's lab and trying to clean up the mess that has been caused. It's a great distraction. Um, nothing, nothing putting anyone in deadly danger, but just like, you don't know what chemicals those were. Get away and figure it out first. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. What yeah. about the so guy you are in trips? the vent? Is he okay? <laughs> Physically, yeah. Emotionally, no. <laughs> he's probably embarrassed. <laughs> I hope he's not covered in potentially bad chemicals. Yeah. No, no. They he he tripped and they flung and they flew far enough away. No acid damage. No. It's NPCs okay. NPCs were harmed in the making of this episode. Yet. Yeah. yeah yet. Yet. <laughs> Oswald's feelings are definitely going to get hurt. So you're in the vents. Where to, where to next, Bruce? Bruce wants to go underneath room three, please and thank you. Back under sure. the um, administration room. And now what Bruce is going to do is he's going to remove one of the patches that he's wearing. So what Lazuli has given him is they gave him like basically a knockout gas capsule. And he's going to take one out and he's going to chuck it into the room to activate it (laughs) underneath. So hopefully it won't knock him out, but only the people in the room. Perfect. We'll say you'd probably throw it in there and then take a few steps down the vent so that way it won't. Oh, yeah, definitely. See, it'll probably get in there, but by the time you get back, it probably won't be active anymore. But yeah, you throw this little capsule into the room. I'm going to make some saving throws that are probably going to be awful because these are NPCs, like commoners. So yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a one and that's a three. OK, so the two aides that were in this room milling about the one that gave that really boring speech about paperwork. They, you just, you hear a thud and then another thud from inside this vent. And after a couple of moments, this gas kind of dissipates. And you were, you were basically told, give it two minutes. The gas becomes inert and they'll be out for a good hour. Oh, perfect. So you crawl up into the, into the room now or? Yeah, I'm going to try and break open the door. I realize that there is now a vent inside the room, but I feel like Bruce would not know that. So I am going to try and break open the door instead. Sure. Okay. Um, You pop out of this vent. And this is when you notice, or actually roll a intelligence, or no. Yeah. Intelligence notice check, please. That is, that's a five. Okay. Uh, You notice nothing. You're fine. Okay. Totally fine. Totally not suspicious Um, at all. (laughs) So this door is a giant vault door with a electronic keyed lock, like keypad lock on it. Okay, can I can I can I use my compad to to try and hack it? Sure. I'm assuming that's another roll. Let's see here. Yes, um, it will be a <coughs> intelligence sneak check with a plus two bonus mm. since it's hacking. Uh, or or you can use program instead if you have better program. I would rather use program. Um, sure. That makes it a six. A six. Flat across the board. So, sure. Uh, so it unlocks, but you it takes like a good like 10 to 15 minutes to actually get this door open, um, which is a lot longer than you really had hoped for with this kind of mission because timing is everything. The longer you're away from your group, the less likely it is that your disguise will hold up. But the door opens and slides to the side, and you are inside the server room. There are computers buzzing and whirring. There's servers. There's monitors and all kinds of 
electronic mumbo jumbo here. And you see several terminals that you know you could probably access this data from. So yeah. And then you do also look and you do see this vent like right, like just right there. Okay. Having seen <laughs> the having seen the vent, Bruce is gonna close the door. Uh, cause he knows he has another way out that doesn't involve the door. And he doesn't want anyone like he at least wants notice if someone's gonna come in behind him, even though he's wearing his great maintenance disguise <laughs> that no one can see. <laughs> And yeah, he'll go to one of the computers and try and access the files to the funds and see what's been going on. Sure. Go ahead and roll a intelligence program check. Ooh, that is a nine. I'm sorry, that is not enough. You get an error code and a little voice says, two more attempts remaining before total lockout. Well, uh, I'm st- I'm I'm still gonna try again, cause sure. cause I, I I gotta. That's a little bit better. That's a ten. Is that including your plus two bonus? Oh no, the nine wasn't even including my plus two bonus. I didn't think I had a bonus on that. Yeah, yeah. If you're are you wait are you using your data pad for that one? Yeah, it seems so. Okay, yeah. Then yeah, you get your plus two bonus. Okay. So an eleven and then a twelve. Yes. A twelve is what you needed. Woo. So <laughs> cool. You bust into this server and start downloading the data. You don't have the time to really go through it here, but you do see the words Project Epidrome several times on the screen as you're downloading this data. And as you're sitting here waiting for the download to happen, you hear a familiar voice coming through the vent as Marty is yelling that they have a medical emergency just in the next room over. And Marty, this attendant has gone to go get Oswald, and Oswald comes barging into the room, all flustered, um, clearly distracted by a bunch of other things going on. And it's just like, really? You had to make a scene coming here? You couldn't have just come in through the front door like a normal person? You had to just make a big scene? Emergency. Hello. Hi. Hi, Marty. What's the emergency? And I motion to row. (laughs) (laughs) That is, that is an unconscious woman. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, is this not a place where you're trying to, like, understand and uh, fix, fixed beings that have uh, torched significantly? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you could tell that this person has been has been torching. Sorry. I guess you're not as smart as I thought they were. Can I get someone else who is more competent? Okay. I understand now. This is the, the person you were... I thought you were talking about yourself when you sent Aww. me those messages. I, you know... <laughs> I recognized that your skills weren't always up to snuff, and so I just I assumed that it was it was you, sir. Can we keep the mudslinging to a minimum? We have a patient that needs help. Yes, and uh, you are none of your business. Go get your supervisor. <laughs> <laughs> just I, I, I am the supervisor. Out on him. <laughs> <laughs> Could have fooled me since your staff didn't know we were coming. Oh, Marty, you have just gotten all kinds of tough talking friends, haven't you? Fine. Everyone, out of my way, let me assess the patient. And Oswald starts putting on gloves and is just like, did you get the data that I sent you? Of course you did. You insulted it. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you double check your work? Because it's definitely incorrect. Ollie's going to uh, stop him as he's putting on the gloves and say, (laughs) sorry, we require your lab, not your assistance. Oh! Ouch! (laughs) As, as and he's just going to do that casually as he's continuing the uh, setup process, plugging uh, row into the life support and all that. Sure. Um, you transfer row from this floating bed to one of the operating beds, and Oswald is looking very flustered at getting kind of tag teamed by all of these people that came in with their longtime academic rival, and is just looking around. It's like, okay, you know what? Fine. You don't want my help. You don't need my help. I will be in my lab cleaning up a very dangerous chemical spill. So go do that. (laughs) (laughs) Find your own psionic to help you with the procedure. See if I care. And Oswald wanders out of the room and back into their lab. Do we actually need help? Is Machamp Uh, here with us somewhere? I mean, it would be nice to have like a... Machamp is standing there awkwardly, like like that kind of person that's like doesn't know the context of a fight, and but is in a room when a fight occurs, and so just like kind of like looking around, like oh yeah, look at these people in these chambers. Uh huh. This is really interesting. Uh-huh. <laughs> you don't necessarily need Oswald's help. You have a psionic here with you, 
in the form of Marty to do this procedure. We believe in you, Marty. Marty, you have all the data available. You corrected his thing. Mm-hmm. You, cor- you did correct the work. Yeah. Um, still, it is experimental. Mm-hmm. Bruce, you hear all this commotion going on through the vent. How do you react to hearing your friends on the other side of this wall? It's our to breathe. How how long has my uh, download got to go? It is at sixty five percent. Okay, that's fine. I'm I'm assuming it's just like a live updating thing. Like it just live sends. Bruce doesn't have to wait for it to get to 100. It's it's on transmit, so it's it's transmitting to your shuttle. Okay. In which case, he's going to pop that safety hatch open and try to go towards the voices. If he can Bruce. hear them, that's he's going to assume he can hear them through the vents, and that's what he's going to try and do. Sure. Uh, go ahead and roll a either dexterity or intelligence, and we'll go with notice. Uh, we'll go dexterity because that's better for me. So that's a nine. Sure. Okay, yeah. Uh, You realize the sounds are coming just from the next room, and you follow the vents, and you are just underneath the vent in this lab. Marty, Roe is prepped and ready. Are you going to perform this procedure with with her? Um, Or... Out of curiosity, so there's no one else in this lab, correct? uh, The attendant has come back in and is, like, purposefully just, like, making themselves scarce over here in the corner. Um, And the Machamp is up here somewhere checking out these people. Okay, sweet. I was going to say it would be a bigger flex to get his, like, assistance, like his attendants to help, but not him. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So, up to you, Marty. No! We're gonna do it as a closed situation, cause Marty, Marty's not here for 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 the glitz and the glam. She's here to help. Row. No, they could stay. Well, I mean, do we want them to? Cause Row is like not from here, and also, oh yeah, like secret girl. <laughs> yeah. Before I start, can I like make sure that like the information that's coming off of like the computers, cause we have her hooked up. Could that be, like, on, like, an internal hard drive that we have control of so it's not going anywhere except for, like, our own location? Does that make sense? Did I did I communicate technology Yeah, terms? I, I get what you're saying. You you could set up a local server. Because Ollie's an AI and has just a vast amount of computing power, you could set up a local server on Ollie to hold this data. Yo! <laughs> as long as Ollie consents to it. Yeah. yeah we do need Ollie's permission. We gotta ask Ollie about that. Absolutely. Ollie, could you use you as a hard drive? Awesome. <laughs> Anything to help our new friend. Sick, smexy, amazing, wonderful. Cool. Is that gonna yeah. require a processing point or me to be incapacitated? Yes. It will require a processing point. You will be able to observe and everything, but you will not be able to go farther than like five feet from the bed while you're connected. I'll go ahead and, since Ro is a secret girl, we should probably get that person to not be in the lab. <laughs> You're valid. <laughs> so Polaris will walk over to them and like gently kind of like tap on the shoulder to get their attention. They're just like, uh, yeah, oh, uh, how can I, how can I help you? Uh, I'm sorry. Without proper clearance, you can't actually be in this lab. Not right now, at least until we're done. Oh, I thought I had proper clearance. Are, are you sure? Yes. <laughs> huh. Well... Uh, go ahead and roll a Charisma Connect check. No, I have no. nothing in that! <laughs> or a Charisma Leap. No, I have nothing in that either! <laughs> Wait, Charisma Connect? Yeah. Can, can I help by just giving a quick glare at the person in the back? I love it, yes. Roll Charisma Connect to help. Oh, beautiful. Yes, or, please help me. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, you would only get a plus one from me. But you know... Can, is oh, there an intimidate? Oh God. Can I do an intimidate? <laughs> is there, there's not an intimidate. Damn it. I think that would be lead. Shit. And I don't have anything in them. I got an 11 for help. <laughs> okay. B, what did you roll? <gasps> Eight. <laughs> Eight? Eight. That's not bad. Um, well, you're like, hey, you're lucky this guy's a moron. Sweet. <laughs> what a maroon. <laughs> <laughs> um, between between Marty's glare and your very like monotone official way of speaking, this person's just like, uh, well, I, I guess I'll go help Oswald with the uh, yes, do that with the cleanup. <laughs> sure, hey, just make sure 
these these folks don't uh, flatline, okay? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bruce, you are in this vent. You coming out or are you staying there? Oh, no, Bruce is coming out. Uh, but I feel like beforehand, because I, I don't. Uh, no, I, I don't think Bruce would. I think, yeah, he's just going to come out. <laughs> As soon as the vent opens, Polaris goes to grab his laser pistol, remembers he doesn't have it, and then sees Bruce and just stares. Hold on. Do we know it's Bruce because Bruce is in disguise? (laughs) Oh, do we have to roll to recognize Bruce? I feel like we could recognize Bruce. That's the genius of it. (laughs) Y'all recognize your friend Bruce. Hell yeah. For some reason. (laughs) No no one one else. else. No one else does. (laughs) No one else sees through these disguises, but y'all are just like, oh, it's Bruce. As, as soon as Bruce is fully out of the vent, Polaris, like, speed walks over and does the thing where, like, he puts his helmet against Bruce, like, kind of like a hud- hug. Or, like, you know when, like, cats run over and they, like, nudge you? That. Yeah. Because Polaris Aww. doesn't know how to hug. I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to say something very similar. As happens. like, <laughs> Zod sees Bruce come out, he's going to, like, have the helmet deconstruct and then he's going to run over and, like, bear hug him. <laughs> put like one arm around Polaris and the other arm around Son. Just be like, I'm sorry I was gone for so long, but I'm here now. <laughs> How the heck are you here, man? Well, I might be stealing data about their finances. Oh, excellent. We're stealing their lab for a moment, Tempor- temporarily, but we're helping this lady. And Bruce, you do see that this person that you only got a glimpse of back on the Cassiopeia, who you've only ever seen actually knocked out. (laughs) So this is nothing new. (laughs) This is nothing new. Yeah, Hitsune Miku over here is laying down on this operating bed connected to Ollie and getting ready for some sort of procedure with Marty. I'm I'm on the other side of the bed with my hands extended being like, ooh, 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 wait, I want a hug. <laughs> Pause operation for a hug. Uh, Ollie's going to get up and try and go for a hug, but he's going to get stopped and tugged back by the cables. So he's just going to be like, uh. Bruce will hug Marty and like take his hat off with his tail and like put it on Marty's head and then walk over to Ollie and give him a hug and just be like, I miss you guys too. I should probably make sure I recover my data pad before we leave, but um, right, I uh, I have a gift for you, Zon, and like he'll pull out the other data pad that Lazuli gave him and just be like, "This is the blackmail that the uh, tigers had on us." And um, Lazuli, they gave me information on how to delete it. I figured there might be some valuable stuff on this that we maybe don't want to delete, and I thought you might have fun with it. Zahn uh, gladly takes it and is like, and as his helmet reconstructs, and he's like, hell yeah, man. When Bruce, when did you turn into this international super spy? Sheesh. <laughs> I think Bruce will just shrug and smile and just be like, apparently creativity doesn't just stay in the kitchen. <laughs> Speaking of, I have a gift for you. And he pulls out the little canister of like bay leaves that Bruce left behind and hands them to Bruce. He's oh been carrying gosh. that around. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Bruce will smile and just be like, please tell me you just haven't been consistently eating those bars. Then I won't. And then he'll walk over to the thing with Rose. <laughs> Food has been uh, spectacularly more boring since you came, since you left. Well, Marty's been cooking. Ouch. Ouch. I was gonna Ouch. say. Ouch. <laughs> oh, the shade. Oh Hello. my god. It's not a diss on Marty's cooking <laughs> capabilities. It's a compliment on Bruce's extravagant cooking capabilities. Are you digging? You're continually digging a hole in front of Marty. Yeah, you're really <laughs> saying that Marty's a basic bitch and Bruce is way back. <laughs> oh my god. Zon's gonna shut up. <laughs> Thank god you're back. We've only been eating McDonald's. <laughs> Hearing Bruce mention Lazuli, he's going to be like, Lazuli, is. or are they here on the planet with you? No. They um, went to go and investigate some other call and sent me to do this as a solo mission and basically said that my uh the blackmail was done and that's why they gave me the data pad there's stuff going on with the hegemony and wasn't exactly my skill set which um 
they're probably right. I find it hard to believe that they simply kept their word. Maybe we have misjudged the Winstons. No, we killed their relative. Rich people generally don't like that. I, at least some of them, despite having, you know... That would improve this... They're the size of their inheritance if you killed off all their family members, so... Well, sure, but they don't like other people doing the job. Oh, true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no one's allowed to kill my uncle but me. Exactly. Because <laughs> then they'll have the secret satisfaction that they were the reason their inheritance is bigger. Oh, my gosh. Dastardly devils. Indeed. Marty, as a refresher, the data that Oswald had sent you on this experimental procedure... It's called mind melding. Basically, you link your mind with a scion who has been torched or is incapacitated in some way um, and apply a dose of the brainwave drug to the person that is incapacitated. And once the two minds are linked, the healthy bio scion will be able to use their powers to heal the mental pathways that have been burned in the torched victim. Or at least that's how the experiment is supposed to go. Mm -hmm. Who is going to be administering the dose while you align your energies with Ro? Oh shit, who's good at drugging people? Yeah, what kind of a stab? Would, would that be a stab situation? Would it, okay, can I also defend? Could I defend this? Sure. Would you say applying a vaccine is kind of like basting a turkey? <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> Bruce has probably exempted that. <laughs> Let's see. It, it is a heel roll. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> by the book. Ah, well. Mm -hmm. well I can't help there. Well, shit. This particular drug is just a patch. Oh, so. Oh. Oh, okay. That's fine. Who, yeah. who who has a healy heel? Who who has some heel heel? Or did you all just not do it and rely on me? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm only good I mean, at yeah. harming. <laughs> yeah, we got a med. I'm only good at fixing and harming. <laughs> I'm pretty good at fixing, but I pretty much can only hacky things. <laughs> Sweet, we got two harm boys and a, I mean, I and can, a hacker. I, can, I, can, I will uh, say, do we, do we have any of the chips for all the honest right now? I know, I'm I'm kind yeah, of occupied by chip. being the server though. Oh yeah, we have a yeah. Well, at least our um, yeah, I mean, you can still yeah, you can still move and stuff, but yeah, I don't think you could install a chip without having to disconnect everything. Uh, is there like a program or something that we could use that Polaris could like patch onto his helmet? Because his helmet is essentially a computer that could like it, basically assist in letting him know where the best place to put the patches, like an X-ray sort of deal. Yeah, roll intelligence program. Ooh, do I have anything? I wow, I somehow don't have anything in purple. Right. Gosh darn it. You just, but I'm smart. I was thinking of the exact same thing. You just beat me to the punch. <laughs> oh, uh, 10. <laughs> That's good enough. I was going to put it at a 10. So. Sweet. You actually log into the local server for the Institute and find a bunch of like automated like training programs for administering medication. And like one of them is like basic first aid. Sweet. Right. And you kind of skim past all the boring stuff. Like, <laughs> how to identify bandages and stuff like that. Then you get to the part where it's like applying medication and there's a friendly little stick figure illustrating how to apply different medicines. And one of them says brainwave and shows the person just slapping it on someone's uh, forehead. Oh my gosh. I'm so oh glad God. because I was thinking of like the, the meme where you get a craft single and slap it on someone's face. <laughs> <laughs> or it's head on um, apply directly so to the I forehead. Will <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I will give you whatever your heal roll or heal skill is right now. Just make it a plus one for this roll. Thank instead. goodness it's negative one. <laughs> and then it's um, intelligence since you're using training. Hell yeah, I'm uber smart. <laughs> so for you, Marty, as Polaris is getting ready to apply this medication, I would like I would like you to roll a, a wisdom heal. And add your biopsionic skill to the roll. I'm looking at my healer foci, and I gain the heal. Blah, blah blah. You may attempt to stabilize one mortally wounded adjacent person per round on a turn. One rolling heal skills rolled three d six. So I'm rolling three d six? Question mark. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sick. That's totally. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, that was so terrifying. The one is gone. What? Wonderful. Oh, thank god. Um, one of my dice kept rolling and it was right next to the die that rolled a one so i was just watching oh, no. it roll <laughs> it rolled a six so that's cute so it's gonna be 
Six. Wisdom. Does a 14 do anything? Perfect. As we kind of talked, like, Scions can kind of see... They can kind of see this this psychic energy around them, right? And when you really focus on it, that's when you really notice, like, just how much there is. And there's kind of like a pattern to the way it moves. And you are able to manipulate this energy usually to heal people physically. But following your memory of the data that Oswald sent you and the corrections you made, you align this energy in a way that connects you to Rose's mind. And as you do... Uh, you give a thumbs up to Polaris, and Polaris, go ahead and make your roll. I'm gonna, I'm gonna unpeel this craft signal and slap it on her wrist. I mean, it is not a very hard roll. I will say that. Excellent. Okay, what am I doing? So heal is a plus one right now, and I'm adding intelligence. Yes. So plus two, eleven. Yeah, perfect. You apply a patch to a forehead. Let's go. Probably the hardest roll I've done in this game so far. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, I hope not. No, I'm kidding. I'm so kidding. <laughs> okay. And Marty, you see Polaris's hand come down on, onto Rose's forehead, and suddenly there is a flash of bright white light. And as this light fades, you find yourself in a field of flowers, a beautiful rainbow of flowers, different colors just spread out around you. And in different directions in this field, you see several different figures standing or sitting or kneeling in the distance. And it takes you a moment as your mind eyes, I guess, <laughs> your <laughs> eyes in this place kind of focus and settle. As you see these figures, you see to your left is a row who is wearing red combat armor. And she is raising boulders into the air and like moving her hands. And you just see these boulders crumble to dust. And then another gesture reforms the rock and she repeats this process over and over. To your right, you see a row wearing a black gown hunched over what looks like a memorial of some kind. And she is weeping. Directly ahead of you, you see Ro is wearing a golden gown of radiant light. She is smiling and embracing a figure that you cannot make out from this distance. And then as you look behind you, you see a row wearing the same blue vac suit that you found her in on the Cassiopeia. And she appears to be looking at a hollow projection of a blue and green planet. And while not crying, she definitely seems depressed. And as you take this scene in, Ro, as you currently know her, appears next to you and begins to speak. Thank you for listening to our show. Beyond the Furthest Stars is a one-up podcast network production. Intro and outro music produced by Dustin Carpenter. Background music provided by TabletopAudio.com and used under an attribution, non-commercial license from Creative Commons. Tracks used today include Starbase Omega, Mega City Slums, Covert Ops, Pattern Recognition, Starship Medical, and Ethereal Plane. We'll be back on August 15th with our next episode. See you out there beyond the furthest stars.